Hey, is this thing on? Hey folks, welcome back. In this video you will learn how much money you can accumulate with compound interest when interest is paid more than once a year. Prior to getting started, I would like to thank Professor Bai Sung Chan who is one of the authors of the book on which this course is based and who wrote the following comment on the first lecture of this course. It is amazing that Miguel is able to explain such important and fundamental concepts within a less than five minutes video. Thank you so much sir for your generous comment, much appreciated. Okay, so let's start by recalling the situation of annual compounding in which you just receive interest once per year. In that case, per each unit of capital you accumulate according to the following expression, where at is the so-called accumulation function, and where your r corresponds to the rate of interest per annum. Okay, so you're now ready to compute how much you've accumulated in total. And that is given by the amount function. And the amount function consists of the initial capital times the accumulation function. What if interest is paid more than once per year? How can you learn about how much money you can accumulate on that case? Let's learn about this from one example. Suppose you put 2000 US dollars in a savings account earning 5% payable monthly. What is the accumulated amount at the end of the first month and what is the accumulated amount at the end of two years? Let's start by describing how one unit of capital accumulates. You write down the accumulation function, but now, since interest is payable monthly, you have to divide your rate by 12. In the exponent, there's a 12 there, which is representing that there are 12 months in a year. And since we're computing the accumulated amount after the first month, you have to multiply by one divided by 12. And this is just the accumulation function after the first month. So it is how one unit of capital accumulates. But your interest is not just in that, you want to compute the total accumulated amount and that can be computed using the amount function given by the initial principle times the accumulation function. And that is about 2008 US dollars now let's move to the interest earned. The idea is simple. The interest earned over the first month is simply given by the difference by the amount you've accumulated over the first month minus the initial capital. And that is just $8.33. Okay, so here is the solution again after typesetting. And on the following slide, I'm also presenting the solution for the part of the exercise where you had to compute the accumulated amount after two years. The main difference to highlight there is that you have to adjust the period of time and rather than writing down 1 divided by 12, which was representing month, now you have to write down 24 divided by 12, which is representing the two years. And in terms of the interest earned over that period, it's just again computing the amount function at the, uh, after two years minus the initial capital. And that's it. So now you know how much you can earn with compound interest, regardless of the frequency of payment. And what we've seen in this example extends as follows. So let M be the frequency of compounding, also known as frequency of interest payment. In the previous example, M was equal to 12 because interest was payable monthly. Also let one divided by M to be the compounding period and Rm to be the rate of interest payable m times a year. Recall to this situation compound interest with 1 divided by m compounding and the accumulated amount becomes in this case described by this expression which is exactly what we've seen before. So this describes the way that one unit of capital grows and essentially as I've anticipated before the rate of interest has to be divided by m because interest is payable m times whereas time has to be inflated so you have to multiply t by m and that is because you have to keep into account that interest is payable m times a year. So what we've just seen allows you to see how a single unit of capital grows over time with compound interest. 
Now, when you want to see how much you accumulate in total, for that you have the amount function, and the amount function again consists of the initial principle times the accumulation function. And the expression is just right there, and it is describing you the law of motion of your accumulation over time. The accumulated amount grows faster the higher the frequency of interest payments. If you want to convince yourself of that, redo the previous exercise keeping the same initial principle, 2000 US dollars, but with interest being paid annually. But wait a minute. If the accumulation becomes higher, the higher the frequency of payments, does that mean that I can get any desirable level of accumulation simply by increasing the frequency of payments? No, that turns out to be false. Let's see. The situation we're studying now is known as continuous compounding. And continuous compounding corresponds to the situation where you are actually earning interest at every period of time. So in that case, how do we go about modeling and understanding this? So what happens is that the accumulation function is as before given by this law. And, and now continuous compounding, you're really compounding at every period of time. So what is happening is that m goes to, to infinity and, and thus what you are doing is defining an accumulation function that corresponds to the situation of continuous compounding, which is given by the following limit and and this limit can be rewritten as follows just as you rewrite this expression you put everything to the power of of t this is a well-known limit this is the so-called napper limit and this limit is just given by e to the power of r t, where this r is simply corresponding to r infinity. And this is the rate of interest when you have continuous compounding. So for every period of time t, Actually, the amount that you can accumulate is bounded by this function here. So it grows very quickly over time, but it is bounded for each period of time. That's all, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye! To make the most of the learning experience, you may want to consider buying a copy of the book on which these notes are based, as well as a professional calculator. Just have a look at the links in the description of this video.